Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail. And I had to give you another snow scene because it's snowing here again in northern Nevada. It snows often, but it's spring and it's still snowing. Anyway, I have several clips for this Friday night fun premiere. The first one is from Judge Raquel West in Texas. The next few are from Judge Van in Bay County, Florida. I swear he gets the people of Walmart. That's all I have to say. The next one is with Judge Bronlich in Michigan. And I recorded this one on, you know, as it happened. And I, I forgot about it. And I saw that Mike had done it. And I was, I planned on doing it and I totally forgot about it. So you get to see it twice if you saw it before. And then I've got two with Judge Stevens in Texas. And of course, I have to have a Judge Rosie Speedland Gonzalez from Texas also. And then the last one is this hilarious clip that Miss Kinsley turned me on to. Thank you so much, Karen. But it's a Monsanto deposition. And all I can say is you've got to watch it. It's hilarious. So here you go. Good morning, sir. You're Christopher Cooper. And Mr. Cooper has three cases. He has a charge of retaliation, a possession of a controlled substance, and a tampering with physical evidence. Cases are set for trial to begin with jury selection next Monday. And what is the announcement? Same as before. Ready, Judge. All right, so Mr. Cooper, what I'm going to do, what was the offer that was, let me give me just a second, I want to make sure that we... Uh, uh, well, the current offer was, before was to dismiss two of them, which were non-state jail, and possibly plead to an attempted non-state jail, which would reduce the value of the last state district. Okay. Uh, I will be preparing for the trial next week and have been can't hear you. I will have everybody in. Uh, but he has, he has declined. So, Mr. Cooper, I want to make sure you understand that after today, mm -hmm. I will not accept any plea offers. I want to just speak on fire. Our last was mostly just go. If y'all got me on camera doing what they say that I did. Here's the thing, please, Mr. Man. Cooper, hold on. These so are things. Right Mr. Cooper, stop I'm talking. Right now. Mr. Cooper, I'm going to take you to jail right now because you won't listen to me. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying, and then I'll give you an opportunity. Yes, Mr. Burbank has filed a motion for discovery. He has all the information on your case. I can tell that from my computer. He is a great attorney. I'm sure he's preparing for your case. And let me also explain that if you're not on video, it doesn't mean you're not guilty. I'm sure Mr. Burbank has explained that to you. Not every crime is on video. So the state has what they have. All I want you to understand is that I'm going to number the cases tomorrow for trial next week. Your case is getting old. It's probably going to be at the top of the list. I will not accept this plea agreement after today. The only option you'll have after today is to let a jury decide on all three of your cases, or you can enter a plea of guilty to me, but it would be open. Do that, okay, not, that's I'm fine. Not, Perfect. Then that's what juries are for. Okay. And we'll I'm take not, Mr. Not, Cooper, I'm not, I'm not, Mr. Cooper, I'm you are disrespecting. You're disrespecting me. So because you say I'm not going to stop talking over me, I'm about to put you in custody. Mr. Burbank can prepare for jail knowing where you are this week. If you talk over me one more time, I'm going to find you in contempt. I'm going to raise your bond and you're going to jail. Don't walk off and leave until you're told to walk off and leave. You need to stay in touch with Mr. Burbank. He will know tomorrow at about one o'clock in the afternoon what the trial order is. He will tell you when to be back next week and ready for trial. Do you understand? You're free to go. Yes, sir. Does Mr. Wood? Yes, sir. Mr. Wood, your full court charges. Bill? Let's see. An un unlawful possession of a shopping cart. Oh my is God. That, is, that, is, that, is that a serious charge, you think? Is that a serious charge? Heinous. Heinous. No, I don't. 
good God, it's got Walmart's name on it. Yes, that's serious. It's like, do you remember in the old rest when they took those cows? It had this little free from it. This, my God. Do you know that kind of lobby Walmart has in the state of Florida? No, it is not heinous. It is not serious. It's just a it's just a petty theft charge, man. Well, I, I mean, I was just borrowing it. I was just borrowing it. I really wasn't trying to. Get yeah, it. <laughs> well, they they get real particular about it being borrowed off their property. Yeah, I can see that. Okay. All right. So you got two charges. You got the, the theft charge and the theft of the cart charge. I understand you've been given copies of paperwork and advice of your rights. Is that true? Yes, sir. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. So you have an attorney now. Any questions? Okay. No, sir. Deputy yeah, criminal history. Side of Kentucky. E 21, 22, 23, FTA, 24, disorderly, 20, intox, controlled substance, careless, paraphernalia, resisting, controlled substance times two. 16 domestic. It goes back to 14 in Kentucky with the flea and the lube. What brings yeah, you here? Pretty, I used to be pretty wild, man. I, I'm on a mission from God, actually. I mean, that's, he's telling me to do all this stuff. I'm just doing what he's to do and he got me here. So we'll see what you know, we'll see what happens next. Okay, maybe. Blue brother. I, I was just I just did I just did it. Brothers. See? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I sure did. They didn't have no fear, they run on faith, did they? All right, man. Bond said twenty-five hundred on the theft, twenty-five hundred on the theft part. No contact with Walmart. A fate worse than death. Court date's going to be April third at eight thirty. Hey, you got a lot of people you can talk to in there that need need the message. Step to your right to the T. When the light comes on, sign. <laughs> Step on the X. Oh boy, I'm missing. Step on the X. Okay. Say your name. Julie Ellen Bryan. Court charge of domestic violence with battery. Do you understand the charge? I. What do you think? You understand what you're charged with? That's all. That's all I asked. I didn't ask if you agreed with it. I just asked if you understood. You've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true? Yes. All right, ma'am. Based on your application, find that you do qualify. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any question about that? No, sir. Deputy, criminal history? I have on um, um, felony probation. Leaving the scene with death. You have a case number, ma'am? 99. 338 CF. Hmm. All right. All right, ma'am. Be trial release for another domestic. Well, yeah, it's with you, actually. Eh, we'll, we'll leave it, be. I think the violation of probation will probably take care of everything. In case 99-338, I'm going to sign a warrant for violation of probation on the new domestic violence battery bond, 5,000. It's going to be April 3rd at 8.30, no contact indirectly or through a third-party alleged victim. Good luck, ma'am. Right. Step to your right to the T. Say your name, ma'am. Adriana Mata. Ms. Mata, this is for the court charge of domestic violence battery. Do you understand that charge, ma'am? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And you've been given copies of paperwork and advised of your rights. Is that true, ma'am? Yes, sir. Based on your application, you indicate you're going to hire your own attorney or represent yourself. Is that how you proceed? Uh, yes, sir. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, history. Okay, history. All right. Free trial release. Court date is tomorrow, April 3rd at 8.30. You report to the pre-trial release for tomorrow. Yes, sir. Right. No Step contact. behind to the signature. 
Just do a third party. Let's go. Next. Wait, X Mayor, state your name. I'm going to face the TV. Just wait. Young, you're for the court charge of petty theft. Do you understand that charge? No, I haven't been informed of a charge as of until today, just to be sir. I was just okay. provided. Um, no. The information on this affidavit is not accurate. I do not reside in the state of Florida, and I have not been informed of a reason on why I am here. For petty theft. What is the, um, what is the, what is allegedly has been stolen? You're moving I, I, I'm I'm at, the I'm vehicle at, and taking it with you. I'm sorry? Removing the decal sticker from a victim's vehicle and taking it with you. I've done no such thing, sir. And the officer, before unlawfully detaining me, I allowed him myself and my belongings, and he found no such decal. What was the bond, sir? I would like to argue. Thank you. Thank you. I did. I did. So I'm doing it. Okay. okay. All right. You can I'm stay. sorry, sir. I didn't hear you. You don't need to. Good luck. All right. Come on out, ma'am. I'm sorry. Are come you threatening me, sir? What's your name? Excuse me. I have a right to give his name. What's your name? Step on out. Okay. Name Van. Yeah. Make sure see what you did. See, see what you did. Not today, boss. That's no. 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 I'm not coming back down here no more. <laughs> Step on the X, ma'am, and state your name. She should know me. She yeah, saw me in court. Face to face. Well, give her the kudo for coming to court. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. I'm okay. I'm Bailey. Ms. Lewis, you pull the court charge of possession of crack cocaine. You understand the charge? Yeah, I understand the charge. I'm seeing you've been giving copies of paperwork mm -hmm. to advise of your rights. That's true, ma'am? Yes. Based on your application, I find that you do qualify for the service of the public. I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you. Any questions about that? <laughs> I'm going to take that. Hold on. Yeah, I thought she was sovereign last time I saw her, but she's not sovereign. She, yeah, there's just something. Not sovereign, just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, she, diseases right. are in the same category. Right. This does qualify for the offender. I'm a pointer offender deputy. Criminal history? Um, nothing since the 90s, like 97. It's called pretrial release. You need to be at the pretrial release <laughs> office before 9 o'clock tomorrow. Your court date is going to be April the 25th at 9 o'clock. Good luck, ma'am. April the 25th at 9. You're going to get copies of it. Step over there next to him. Next. <laughs> Mine. Mine. Step on the red X. State your name. It's mine. You're fully court charge possession. Oh, I'm sorry. Failure to appear. No. Possession, of, possession of paraphernalia. You understand that, ma'am? Yes, sir. I showed up on the wrong day. Okay. Well. <laughs> Dick Stevenson has issued a warrant holding you without bond. Your court date is April 25th at 9 o'clock. Oh, God. I, I, there's no bond. It's just like that at all. Okay. <laughs> After talking to you. Yes, ma'am. What? Okay. Um, no. I'm step to your right to the T. <laughs> Red X, ma'am. State your name. On, Black Man. Black Man, you're for the court charge of. Passing counterfeit instruments, you in, 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 in charges? 
Do I need and the sound you charged with? Yeah. I understand you've been giving copies of paper. Not really? No? Yes. <laughs> All right. Ma'am, I understand you've been giving copies of paperwork and advice of your rights. That's true? Yes, sir. Based on your application, aren't you qualify? I'm going to go ahead and appoint the public defender to represent you so you have an attorney now. Any questions about that? He gave you an attorney. Okay. He's cutting in and out too much. No history. No history. <laughs> Pre-trial release. No your contact. Honor. No defendant. Perfect. Your Honor, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, reading the the uh, probable cause narrative, she can't be charged with um, counterfeit because they're clearly marked, copied, not legal tender. They can charge her with a bunch of other stuff. They can charge her with a theft. They can charge her with a fraud, but they can't charge her with the, uh, hey, the counterfeit. Win the battle or lose the war? I'm pre-trial releasing her. Yes, sir. I mean, I can hold her for 24 hours to cure, but we don't want to do that, do we? No, we don't. <laughs> on that particular charge well i mean okay and pre-trial release or petty theft but pre-trial release with a felony court date right. for the record this matter is before the court for the purpose of reviewing as far as parenting time in addition and to address the plaintiff's objection to a child support recommendation. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Our president is attorney Christine Hills, representing the plaintiff father, Robert Moss. Mr. Moss is present. In addition, defendant to mother Tiffany B. Dell is also present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning. Parties have conferred this morning with Mr. Walker from the front of the court. Yes, Your Honor, I'm in the process of trying to get that recommendation to you right now. Just bear with the court for a moment. Court would also note for the record that the last time the parties were before the court, February 13th, the court did refer the issue of custody parenting time to the front of the court for formal investigation recommendation. Uh, the front of the court, Catherine Scott, has recommended that the parties continue to join legal fiscal to defend mother. The court has now received the recommendation of uh, Mr. Walker this morning, which is as follows. Currently time shall continue as briefs ordered by this court. Father's parenting time shall be supervised by Family Counseling Shelter Services. Each party shall pay for their own intake. Mother shall pay for all sessions. The defendant's objection to the child support recommendation scheduled with referee McKeon for April 16th, 2024, 9 a.m. be vacated. Further, with respect to child support, Ms. Walker is recommending that commencing January 1st, 2024, that the plaintiff father pay child support in the amount of $1,452 per month. Your Honor, there's, there's one. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Your Honor there's, there's, a section, there's a section that I forgot to put in. I, I apologize. There's a section that I forgot to put into my recommendation. Um, Mr. Moss is stating that he may have given direct payments to uh, to the other party for child support. And I was going to add there that if he can provide proof that there were payments directly paid to her for my, for January, February, and March, that the friend of the court would give credit for that. So I need to add that to my recommendation. I apologize for that, Your Honor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Walker. 
That's what I said. Recommended uninsured medical expenses be shared as follows. Plaintiff uh, father paying 65%, mother paying 35%. That is a recommendation. Of course, where we have a an 18 month old minor child here. Ms. Sills, uh, with the addition of the language that's suggested by Mr. Walker, that Mr. Walsh received credit for any direct payments made to Ms. Goodell upon providing any proof. Is your client uh, agree with this recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. It's my understanding with respect to the um, parenting time recommendation that um, the current order regarding parenting time would continue only until the Family Counseling and Shelter Services Services is able to accommodate a visit. I know that they have a, a wait list uh, of several weeks, at least at the moment. Um, so I'm not sure if Mr. Walker's intent was that the supervised visits with mother continue once family counseling is involved or that those stop once family counseling is involved. The intent was that once family counseling and shelter services begin supervised visitation, mother would no longer have to supervise. Okay, thank you. And I, I may have just misheard. Um, the reading of the recommendation. So thank you for that clarification. Um, with that, um, Judge, we are not objecting to Mr. Walker's recommendation today. Okay. So, so if the court understands it correctly, Ms. Sills, that the current printing time for dad, which is uh, supervised at by mother okay. at Chuck E. Cheese's on Saturday, Sundays, noon to four, Wednesdays, five, seven, Fridays, four, six, that will continue until such time as the supervised printing time will, will commence at family culture, counseling and shelter services, and uh, that at which point in time uh, all supervised parent time would be at that agency. Yes, and I would suggest and hope that the parties contact the agency as soon as possible to get on the wait list so that there's not any delay. Yes. Um, can you provide the parties with a phone number? Uh, I will. Okay, so Ms. Bidal, you both you need to contact the agency as soon as possible to schedule your intakes. And that's the first step to getting on this wait list. All right, so thank you, Ms. Sills. And Ms. Udell, do you understand the recommendation this morning? Yes, I understand. Okay, do you have any objection to court adopting this recommendation? Yes, I do. Okay, what's your objection? My objection is I don't want it if I have to pay for it. I'd rather supervise the visits myself, even though it's... Uh... I don't want to take the money away from my other five children. Like I have five children. I don't, he has just Shiloh. Like I don't want to pay for his supervised visits because he's lying. You know what I mean? I don't want no, to. Don't. What do you mean he's lying? What was that to the parent? Because time? that's what happened. That's what happened. Your honor. We, we both filled out the investigation and all of what well, he didn't even fill Mr. out. Why don't you sit down, please? You're, you're walking sorry, around the room. I get nervous. I'm sorry. Can you sit down, nervous. please? Yes. So, we both filled out the paperwork and then um, then we got the order for child support and I objected to it because it wasn't accurate. I make 5,000 and it said he makes 6,000 a month. Well, that's not accurate at all. So I objected to it. Then two days later, they object to it saying that, that he makes even less than that. And I'm just like, I, I don't feel like it's right that I have to keep being so nice and supervising the visits and you know, all this stuff. And he's just going to keep lying and trying to cheat Shiloh. So that's what I said. I said it... with Mr. Moss this morning. So what is he lying about his income? Yes, your honor. If they're saying I make 5,000 a month, how does he make 6,000 a month if he has all these houses and all these bills that we have to use our common sense, not just the little bit that he provides of information he provides. So I objected to that. So when I objected, then they turned around and objected, which didn't even make sense because you know what I mean? If you look at his assets, I turned in some of them as proof to friend of the court. I turned in a lot of um, evidence, I feel like. Um, and then he objected to it, but I'm already coming out of money doing all these supervised visits for him and he's gonna still try to cheat Shiloh. So that's why I said, I don't wanna keep supervising the visits if he's gonna, keep trying to cheat my daughter and then he said he don't want to pay for daycare so that i can work he wants to be the babysitter well i can't depend on him because he's evicted me and my kids before so clearly he don't care if we have a roof over our head so me and my kids can't depend on someone like that 
to provide childcare for the family. This just didn't go good today at all, Your Honor, at all. Well, we actually have a lot of anger in, inside you, Ms. Vidal, and I understand um, your frustration. But again, yeah, you're you've got two One is hold on. One is parenting time. One is child support. You object to everything, correct? <clears throat> the 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 initial friend of the court recommendation that I saw, I didn't object to that. But then when he said, when Mr. Walker said that if I want supervised visits through the court, I would have to pay for it. Well, now I'm taking money away from the other five kids. I can't do that. So I'll just continue to be humiliated and supervise the visits if we could do that. But I want, I want it, his income looked into because it's not accurate, Your Honor. And I'm not coming to this court let's, lying let's about one issue anything. At a time. Let's, let's deal with one issue at a time, ma'am. There are two different issues. Ms. Hills, if she doesn't want to pay for the uh, the visits, I don't know. What, what, first of all, what are the costs for the, the visits? Is it $30 a session? Uh, 25 or $30 a session, I, I believe. Okay. Um, and if she doesn't want to pay that, what about continuing the, the if, if mom wants to take time and, and uh, supervise three days a week? Uh, does your client oppose to that? Mr. Moss, in light of what we spoke about um, with regard to family counseling and shelter services, uh, are you willing to either continue with uh, Ms. Budell supervising your visits long term, um, or at least as long term until the court orders at, at some point that your visitation should be uh, unsupervised? Um, or are you uh, willing to take on some responsibility for the payment at family counseling and shelter services of the $25 to $30 a session? Um, um, I, I, I definitely don't have no extra money at this time, so I, I guess we'll just have to do what uh, we have to do. In terms of having her continue to supervise visits? Uh, yeah. And you've indicated that there's not this sort of um, vitriol during the visits as uh, in regard to you, that this is your daughter is insulated from this back and forth between the two of you that we've seen today? So far, but after today, uh, you know, just like she said, she's being humiliated. Um, and then all I see is this, this is about money. All this is, this is about yeah. money. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Ms. Hills, are you, and uh, for the consideration, there is some value to dad having time with the minor child without mom being present, a third party. I agree. Uh, so what the, the courts are trying to do is each party shall pay for their own intake and they should contact the as soon as possible. And the party shall share equally the, the cost of the, the sessions. We're gonna review this, review this in perhaps six weeks. And then at some point in time, uh, hopefully we'll get positive reports from an independent third party. Maybe that we don't need the supervisor for any time. That's the, the hope that the direction we need to move in is to limit the supervisor for any time and I think it's appropriate to observe the relationship between dad and minor child without mom being present so that we can make a determination whether or not dad is capable of uh, providing caring for this child without mom or some other supervisor being present. And we establish the relationship between dad and the child so the court believes that would benefit the minor child. By, we're going to continue the supervised parenting time with mom supervising on Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays as pre order until such time as uh, Family counseling child services is available. I'm willing to schedule supervised training time sessions, at which time, hopefully, it'll be every week, uh, whatever that agency can accommodate. And that'll be just dad and the minor child, Shiloh. And the party shall share equally the, uh, I'm sorry, shall, shall share equally the, uh, shall share the cost of those sessions. So, of course, going to modify uh, the recommendation in that regard with respect to child support. Mr. Walker, can this be referred for formal investigation recommendation? Child sports and parties are required to submit financial documentation to verify income. Ms. Budell is, is disputing the uh, reported income of Mr. Moss. Now, we I, can I do that. I have the benefit of a recommendation. And I know it's an objection to recommendation. It's not in the court file. I have no idea who did the recommendation, what kind of information they used. Your Honor, the, there was a formal recommendation done. My client provided a tremendous amount of income uh, information. And 
looking to see who did the recommendation. Stephanie LaPrade did the recommendation. I did the recommendation, Your Honor. Okay, so there have been a, a signed a statement signed by the parties in terms of verifying their income, correct? Correct. Right. So, uh, Ms. Vidal, you can go to the front of the court and get a copy of the, of the information that Mr. Moss signed. And if you uh, find that he is uh, uh, misleading the front of the court, uh, that, that's basically come back and address this thing further. But at this point, 100%. Time, course, I mean, oh, I'm sorry. I thought you asked me a question. But at this point in time, of course, you plan to adopt the recommendation. And until you can uh, provide other allegations that his income is not accurate, he's provided written documentation in the front of the court. And that's the front of the court has adopted, has made this recommendation based upon the review of the written information provided. Presumably that included, did that include the last year's tax returns? Ms. Hill? That is my understanding, yes. Okay. Your Honor, the What's last three tax returns were included in the packet that was turned in. All right, thank you. So the front so of the court has uh, all the financial information necessary to make this recommendation, Ms. Budell. So he lied to the IRS and now we have to just accept that? Is that what we're saying? Is that what's going on? Because no, Mr. Don't. Ask Mr. Moss how much he pays in mortgage payments a month. If you believe he's committing fraud, you can uh, contact those agencies and, and allege that. I just want yeah. Shiloh to be properly provided for. If he's paying ten thousand dollars in mortgage payments right now, and he used to pay twenty, he can't only make six thousand dollars a month if just his mortgages cost ten. Hey, That's I, where I my anger the, and frustration is coming from. In front of me, Ms. Bedell, the court suggests is contact legal services or attorney and they can petition the court and show that Mr. Moss is understating his his income is going to pay. Why do I have to have an attorney to do that? Tax returns. That's what I want to do, Your Honor. Okay. All right. You have the right to do that. You can still, you can still petition the court to, uh, to challenge us. You need to have some, some proof that there's been fraud on the part of Mr. Moss in terms of his financial situation. I, I guess I'm not understanding what I'm doing wrong then. Provide documentation that he's committing fraud. Some proof rather than just allegations. Where's like just Big Emmett? He sold for four hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and he owned it outright. So I'm not under like he's just get, he's getting ready to sell Breast Road. He's going to clear three hundred thousand on it. I mean, I'm not understanding. He sold West Road, made a hundred something on that last year too. Like it's big money. So I'm not understanding how he only makes one thousand more a month than I do. I'm not. Okay. I'm not understanding. You see, disclosed. Presuming that's all been disclosed in his tax returns, he could have had significant debt in those properties too. I don't know if. You're, but that you're wouldn't be. But that's not accurate. That's not accurate. Okay. Well, you can you can conduct discovery, Ms. Bedell. You can submit interrogatories, request for production of documents to Mr. Moss, and you can get a copy of those things. Yeah, I want Your Honor. I want to. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with court. I want to bring in my evidence and I want to present my evidence. I don't under, understand like this remote stuff. I want to like dress up and come to court and present my case. You can well, you present that to the front of the court. I mean, the front of the court is also, uh, has already conducted the investigation. That's when you should have provided all that information. So that's what I did. And then, and then I told, then I objected to that when we, when they did the discovery, because it wasn't accurate. So I, sorry, sorry, I'm starting to pace. Let me sit down. So I, um, so I objected to that. And then I want to come into court and present my evidence. Okay. Well, we'll leave on here then. You can appear for a referee McKee on April 16th and 9 a.m. We'll keep that on. You can come in with, yes. McKee with all your documentation. So Mr. Yes. Uh, Walker, we'll leave that hearing out for Mr. McKee. The court's inclined to adopt the recommendation this morning. If uh, Mr. McKee, uh, you can address it further on April 16th at 9 a.m. So we'll leave that date on, Ms. Budell. You can come in person, talk to Ms. McKee, and provide with the documentation and show them uh, proof that uh, Mr. Moss is submitting fraudulent tax returns. And they make a complaint with the IRS. Your Honor, I am not available on the 16th. That's a travel day uh, for me. So uh, I couldn't even, can't even promise I could stop somewhere uh, and join in a hearing. 
Um, okay. So I'm wondering if we could uh, get a new date uh, before Mr. McKee from front of the court. I'm, I'm certain my client is going to wish me to be there. Okay. Uh, Mr. Walker, do you have access to Mr. McKee's schedule? Can we take a break? You can call him and uh, we get a, we can change his name for 16th to a different date. Your Honor, we can put that on April 30th at 1 p.m. We'd be available then, Ms. Sills? I can make that. Judge, I've got a 1.30 with you um, that day. So as long as you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I can add that to my recommendation. Uh, Stephanie, can you give me the date one more time? April 30th, 1 p.m. with referee McKee. Thank you, Mr. Brad. Your Honor, the only other thing is um, because they're both self-employed, Mr. Moss provided the last three years, Ms. Budell did not. So we would also need the last three, the three years for her as well, if we're going to be making accurate recommendations to the court. I don't have 21s. I don't have 21s. I gave everything. I didn't file in 21. Hmm. I gave everything. Did file in 2021? No. Why? Because you had no income? No, because I, well, I didn't realize until I just had to submit my paperwork, but it's probably because my company changed names mid-year. So I probably just didn't, I probably missed it because I probably got one from Landmark Realty and then one from Compass Realty and just, I don't know, maybe I got confused or something. But I just realized that when I had to turn, I I don't turn in my income for anything else. So I didn't realize it. There should be a social security statement available. Um, she should be able to set up an account online, which will give a history if there was withholding done, uh, which will give a, a history of the- I'm uh, self-employed, so it, it doesn't. But I just have to find my 1099 from Landmark and then my 1099 from Compass because we just, my brokerage changed names halfway through the year in 2021. So I'm guessing that's what happened. Well, each of those brokers should be able to provide you with the documentation of your income while they were your broker. So reach out to those brokers and yep. uh, try to yes. uh, secure the information, Ms. Bedell, for this uh, hearing on April 30th at 1.30 p.m. You can, uh, 1 p.m., April 30th, 1 p.m. We'll put this in this uh, order this morning that uh, your objection to the child recommendation can be heard by Referee McKee, not on the 16th, but rather the April 30th at 1 p.m. Okay. And you need to get that documentation together. Uh, Ms. Hill suggested to go online with Social Security. They can have that information. Obviously, if you had taxes, uh, I don't know if you were a broker, if you're self employed, they would not have withheld any taxes, but you had an obligation to still pay tax on yeah. income. Oh, so, uh, once documentation. Once you file your time, the court's going to order that commencing as of January first, twenty twenty four. That Mr. Moss paid child support one thousand four fifty two uh, per month. Any time will continue as previously ordered. Namely, mom will supervise for three days a week at Chuck E. Cheese's until such time as it is uh, there's a date, an uh, opportunity to have supervised parenting time between dad and the minor child. Shallow with family counseling, child services. Both each pay your own intake fee, and then the authority should share equally these fees for the sessions. And you'll find we send this for review in about six weeks. Hopefully, we've got some reports from that agency, Ms. Hills. Your Honor, Mr. Walker's indicated that the wait list is currently about six to eight weeks. Okay, uh, so maybe eight weeks then. June 4th, Tuesday, June 4th yes. at 2 o'clock. I have a trial that day with Judge Arnold, Your Honor. Wednesday, June 5th at 8.30. I can do that. So if you could put that review date in the recommendation, Mr. Walker. Yes, Your Honor. Please. What time was that? 8.30, June 5th. Thank you. So, um, Ms. Bidal, do you have the phone number for this agency? You need to unmute yourself. No, Your Honor. 
Okay, do you have a piece of paper and a pen? Yes, I just have to get up. Ms. Hills, do you have the phone number off uh, Andy? I do, it's 734. Are you ready, Ms. Budell? 734-241-0180. Did you capture that, Ms. Budell? Yes, I have that. So please contact Angie today. Get on the sooner. You, both of you need to contact him today and make that uh, appointment for the intake to move this better forward. Right, anything further than this morning, Ms. Sills? No, Your Honor. Uh, Ms. Budell, anything further? No, Your Honor. Okay, so the um, all right, the court will adopt the recommendation as revised. You'll be mailed a copy. We'll see you back in June then. Thank you. April? Right. Well, yeah, well, that's going to that's be for referee McKee. You're not going to be before this court. You're going to be before this court for review in June, review the parenting time. Uh, but the, okay, okay, Your Honor. Your objection to the child court recommendation will be heard by referee McKee in person on April 30th at 1 p.m. We're having the 16th. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. That will close, Mary. I'll zoom out. Claudia Marks. Here. That's you? Here she comes. What'd she say? Good Lord. That, you don't bring a phone in on a phone, talking to somebody on the phone. Turn that off, please. Turn the phone off. Thank you. There's no, no calling in the courtroom. No. Turn that off. Thank you. Let's devote our attention to what's going on up here. Thank you. You were Claudia Marks, correct? Yes. You're charged with arson, the first degree felony. You're looking at a life in prison here. So it's very important that we negotiate through this uh, forest properly. You have Miss Mantellini helping you. Are you still at uh, Lake Arthur? Yes. The same uh, yes. unit? All right. I remember we... Uh, It's an announcement today. I would, what do you want to do? I would request some more time in case I might be filing for a request of an examination. Which I... It, it's two years. going on two years. Yes, sir. I believe that's what I'm going to do. And if your judge will give me one week to get that filed, I can get it filed actually later today. But I'm not comfortable walking around without her being examined, so I know... Where we are. All right, Ms. Marks, are you working anywhere? No. Okay. Uh, the income, what do you receive for income? Social Security. How much is that? $1,600. Anything else? No. No. Uh, are you living there alone? Yes. Okay. Does anybody help you, though, supply you some money to? For food or other no, things, no. are you able with sixteen hundred dollars to pay for the uh, where you live and also buy food? Yes, I get both now. Yeah, okay, and uh, do you? How do you get to and from the store? Uh, my sister. Your sister mm -hmm. drives you. Oh, my son, or I have it uh, delivered now. Okay. I can't go down steps. Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, so, and you're living alone? Yes. Okay. You you don't have any assistance at all? No. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, you know what you're charged with here? Yes. All right. Yes. Now, Ms. Mantellini here is your attorney. What do you, uh, Ms., uh, I'm talking to Ms. Marks, and she seems quite succinct and thoughtful, and she knows what her situation is, and She's living alone and is the money stretches as far as it can. It's obvious that yes, sir. and she's budgeting and existing. And how did you get up here today? My sister. Your sister. Okay. That's who gets you around. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, do you yeah. have to go to the doctor regularly? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Who's your doctor? Well, I have to uh, go to a uh, doctor of uh, Marvin. Because of my heart. Yes, ma'am. Now, and I have to go to Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Gustenberg. Okay. Where, where are they located? What city? 
In Nederland. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you're not too far from there. No, there's okay. reports indicates that she uh, see saw Doctor Mensa at the time in which this occurred. And he is a, a psychologist judge. Mm -hmm. I would just add that, as the court knows, part of the competency to stand trial is the ability to discuss your case with your attorney. And in discussing her case, I don't, I'm just not comfortable. I'm sorry. It, I know we can't get into that here on the record. She's not a, not a trial date, but um, One uh, one reset, I guess, four weeks, and we'll see what uh, what maybe we can we get a resetting. Next, right, right there. Thank you. Yes, twenty three CR one seven six three. Mariah Howard charged with the state jail felony of theft. Hello, whoa. If you have two or more prior theft convictions, then each time you steal just a pack of gum, it's automatically a felony offense. Do you understand? How many theft convictions do you have? Um, I have, I have a big, Let's see if you can guess correctly. It's your life. You should know better than me, but I'm reading the indictment. Yeah. How many? Uh, I've been convicted of Egyptian crime. How many times for theft? So probably like four times. Nine. 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 Nice try. Really? You don't really know how many times you've been in courts, county courts at law? Uh, you've been in district courts, one, two, three four separate times for yeah, felonies. You've been in county courts at law, one, two, three, four, five separate times for misdemeanors. Anyway, uh, now you're in the big leagues and every if it's just a pack of gum, it's a felony. Yes, um, Honor, oh. In her defense, I think some of these were pled on the same day, so they were part of a package deal, so she may be thinking that as a... Well, separate every cases, separate but, offense is a separate offense. I know, but, but for her in her mind, because I'm looking at yeah, the. I'm the sorry. Yeah, well, I'm you saying. don't get this. Isn't I, I know, but I'm saying let's go to Sam's and fill up, and we get a discount. No, I, I know, but I'm thinking just yeah, every said five crime has a separate accountability. In anyway, I don't think she's yeah. trying to, to deceive the court. I think she's in her mind. Some of these were happening. I asked her how many convictions she has. She should know she had nine convictions, okay. period. Uh, not how many times you went to court. Okay. I'm just All saying right. that. I don't think she's intentionally Whatever. trying to mislead the, mislead the court. I'm not right. saying she's intentionally misleading. It's just a shame she doesn't know how many convictions she okay. has. That's fair. Has anybody seen anything wrong with that? Uh, no. no. I, I do. No, I, mean, I don't see anything wrong with you having All that right. feeling. Let's go. Move forward. <laughs> Move okay. on. Good You're Lord. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 we need what are we go, doing today? Need to get discovery, go over with her, and, and uh, figure out a deal. We have an offer on the table, but we need to look at the discovery. And sit down is there a restitution on this? Yes. So we have how a, much is it? A hundred, according to the state, it was one hundred ninety-eight dollars. Okay. So we get about four weeks. So we can go over discovery. All right, get a reset. Four weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Don't go anywhere. Okay. John's with us. Defense ready, Judge. And Michael. Okay. Welcome. Where's Deputy Ramos, and why is this man not in custody? Are we not checking in, folks, when we come into they come into the courtroom? You don't know that they're fugitives or that they. Oh. Olga, let's get on the record in case number 688566 in the matter of the state of Texas versus Michael Gabriel Estrada. Mr. Estrada, you're on live. Can you hear us? Yes, Your Honor. Have you given your attorney, Mr. Pettis, and this court permission to go forward with your proceeding via video conference, also known as a Zoom app? Yes, Your Honor. Can I have announcements from the attorneys as well as probation? Aaron O'Gallagher for the state, Your Honor. John Pettis for defense. 
Officer Martinez, is she with us? She is, Your Honor. Well, I don't see her. I not she only... just she just stepped away for a moment. We're staffing a case. Okay. Well, you're not staffing it during there the proceeding, so okay. Uh, Officer Martinez, we have uh, an individual who I uh, remanded without bond due to a concerning report of alleged uh, noncompliance with conditions of probation. And so are you going to want to uh, announce ready for that? Yes, Your Honor, Marie Martinez for probation. Okay. Mr. Estrada, please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury should you lie to the court? Yes, Your Honor. You may put your hand down. Mr. Estrada, you requested, you asked for the privilege of being placed on probation or community supervision in lieu of instead of you doing time at the Bear County Jail back on the sixth day of February of the year 2023. Uh, almost 14 months ago. The court granted your request for probation with the understanding that you were going to follow court orders and that you were going to comply fully with your conditions of probation. The court received a motion to revoke your probation and adjudicate your guilt uh, back in February of 2024. The allegations were very concerning in light of the fact that it puts the community at risk of harm if those allegations are true. And it's not just one allegation, Mr. Estrada. It's multiple allegations being made against you. Today is not your hearing on those allegations, but you'll get full notice if you haven't already of what those allegations are. And they include time and time again you refusing to submit to drug testing and on March 8th of 2023, April 10th of 2023, May 15th of 2023, September 19th of 2023, October 31st of 2023, December 29th of 2023, January 12th of 2024. Then you thought you could just not show up to report. Those are allegations made for the months of June, July, and November of 2023 and January of 2024. And back on February the 6th of 2023, I gave you 30 days to get enrolled in the BIP program. And you should have been done by that, but with that. And as of February 1st, the state is alleging you still haven't even enrolled. So that's why I revoked you without a bond because you don't get to do probation the way you want to, Mr. Estrada. You get to do it the way I ordered you to do it. And I don't know if you think this is a game or if Mr. Pettis is going to inform me of the fact that maybe there's some cognitive issue with you. Maybe there's a language issue, which I don't think is a, a, has become apparent yet. Or are you just this personality type that thinks that Court orders don't apply to you and that you're something special who doesn't, someone special who doesn't need to comply with my orders or the conditions of your probation. We're going to find out today because your attorney is about to ask that I release you. And I'm not leaning that way at all today with you because we're not playing games here, Mr. Estrada. I have a specific duty to uphold as a judge in this court, and that's to hold folks like you accountable and make sure that primarily your due process is protected. That's why we're having this hearing. And on the same level as your due process is make sure that the community is safe from further acts that have been alleged against you. So we're gonna hear from the state to see what they think is an appropriate amount of bond for this and your conditions of bond. Then I'm going to hear from your attorney. And in this particular case and proceeding, I'm going to hear from probation last. So, Mr. Delgado, what is the state seeking? Again, this is a bond hearing on a revocation of a bond due to the court receiving a very egregious motion to revoke Mr. Estrada's probation 
Um, and so the court is very concerned about Mr. Estrada's ongoing alleged drug use. Nothing seems to have slowed him down and is the rest of his alleged noncompliance with his conditions of probation. Mr. Delgado, the court will hear you now. Uh, yes, Judge. Um, state would recommend, obviously up to the court's discretion, a $6,000 bond in this case. State would also recommend zero tolerance and putting back in place a no contact order with the complaining witness. State is aware that it was changed to a no harmful, but given basically the repeated lapses when it comes to this period, state believes that a no contact order would be best currently. With the additional standing order bond conditions as well. Okay. Mr. Pettis, the court will hear from you now. Judge, we would agree with the state with zero tolerance. Uh, I've spoken to my client. Uh, he does not live with the alleged victim. Uh, so no contact order won't break his bank. Uh, they do have a daughter together, but we do understand the situation. So we would be in agreement with the state and a $6,000 bond with zero tolerance and a no contact order. And how old is this daughter? Uh, she turns two in June, Your Honor. Are you paying child support for her? No, we uh we go 50-50, um, five days on, five days off, and we work with our work schedules as well. Well, that wasn't an answer to my question. Oh, Are no. you paying child support for your daughter? No, Your Honor. And do you make more than Ms. Cruz? Uh, currently, I do not. Okay. And so there is no order establishing you as the father? Or ordering you to pay child support. Am I am I no, uh, correct? Correct. Okay. So there's nothing to establish you as the, as the legitimate father to this two year old. Correct. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ms. Martinez, Officer Martinez, is there anything you'd like the court to know before the court issues orders? Marie, you're on mute. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Just that before he stopped reporting, he used his daughter as an excuse for his not reporting. He stated that he did not have child care. So he stopped reporting. And then the probation department worked very diligently in December and January to get him to report to no avail. And that is when we filed the, the MTR. We have not seen Mr. Estrada since December 11th of 2023. And we notified him that an MTR was filed and that his uh, warrant was issued and advised him to seek guidance from a bondsman. That was in February, and now we are in April, and now he's in court trying to take care of the matter. Okay. Um, I want him drug tested today, and I want the results today before I make a decision. Unless you want to be honest under oath, Mr. Estrada, and tell me what you're going to test positive for. Just for the court's information, there is a medical marijuana prescription card on file. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Sanchez mute, unmuted himself. There you go. Um, we do have a medical marijuana card from the Texas Compassionate Use Program um, stating that he gets five milligrams as needed. And that's dated November 13th of 2023. That's only for marijuana. And is there a doctor that signed that? I don't see a, it's like a, it's like printed from a computer screen. Oh, well, anybody can get that from a computer screen. So no, I'm not going to honor that unless there's an, a physician that's signing off on a prescription and it's willing to put their medical license on the line uh, to, to back up Mr. Estrada's need for medical marijuana. It's off of the Compassionate Use Registry of Texas and it's with all of his um, demographic information listed. Okay. It's not signed by a doctor, is it? The screenshot that I see does not have any signatures, but it does has, have his information and the dosage that was prescribed. The onerous is on the defendant to provide a legitimate prescription for it. And if he hasn't done so, then he doesn't have permission to use it. 
Understood. Okay. So, Mr. Perez, what are we going to do today? Is he going to go drug test? Um, he is, Judge, and he's about to tell you what's going to be on it. I, I have uh, alcohol on it as well as, um, as cocaine. Okay. He's going to be taken into custody. Uh, we're going to keep him uh, to dry out for about 48 hours in the meantime, because the law allows me to do that. Um, uh, state, please uh, let Miss Janessa Renee Cruz know uh, that he is not going to be allowed to have any contact uh, with her or the child. Um, and that means he's to stay a thousand upon his release from custody. He's to stay a thousand feet away from uh, Janessa Renee Cruz and the child. Uh, the alleged subject and product of this relationship. That's a length of about three football fields uh, or uh, three city blocks. He is to remain a thousand feet away from Ms. Cruz and the child if they're in a motor vehicle as passengers or drivers. He's to remain a thousand feet away from Ms. Cruz's home, any place she works, anywhere she goes to church, her family, pets, friends, coworkers, and neighbors. Mr. Estrada is ordered not to place a single phone call to Ms. Cruz. He is not the texter or send her any type of social media app platform messages. He is also prohibited by this order from sending anything to Ms. Cruz via U.S. Postal Service, FedEx, UPS, Amazon, or any other type of courier or delivery service. And he is uh, barred and forbidden by this order from using a third party to try and communicate to Ms. Cruz or about Ms. Cruz. This will be a zero tolerance uh, special conditions of bond order. Uh, he is to be released. It is now 2.40 Monday, April 1st. So he's going to be released after 2.45 on April the 3rd. In the meantime, State, I expect that you'll make contact with the complaining witness. Uh, he is to report weekly. Upon his release, he's to pre report weekly to pretrial services by phone. If his phone breaks, if he loses it, if he can't pay the bill, he is to uh, report in person. He is forbidden by this order from consuming alcohol or using any other type of drugs that he does not have a legitimate prescription for signed by a doctor or nurse practitioner uh, or that is illegal. He is uh, also forbidden from possessing, purchasing, owning, or using a firearm, a gun, and ammunition um, as a condition of his bond. And due to the issues that have come up, he is also, as a condition of his bond, ordered to attend three sober support or three uh, NA and AA meetings per week in person. And as a condition of his bond, he is to start working with either a recovery coach or a sponsor. He needs to identify them and show uh, probation uh, how often he's working with this person um, and the deadline to get on board with that will be May 1st of 2024. So he has a month to get on board with that. Um, this, this is just his conditions of probation. And he is ordered to come into full compliance with his conditions of probation. I'll give him a week from the date of release. So that'll be by April 10th of 2024, he's to be in full compliance with his conditions of probation. That still doesn't take care of the hearing on the motion to revoke his probation. That is the court order. Any questions, Mr. Perez, Mr. Delgado, and Ms. Uh, Officer, excuse me, Officer Martinez? Uh, just that I will get in contact with the complaining witness immediately, Judge. Okay. And Judge, just to clarify, only because I, I was preparing to be the bondsman on this, um, is there going to be a bond set or is it just- Yeah, so it's a 6,000, no, it's a $6,000 bond. Okay. You just said you agreed to that. It's a zero tolerance. Uh, and once he meets the bond, he can be released uh, after 245 on April the 3rd. Thank you, Judge. I just wanted to confirm that. Okay, I just want to make it clear to Mr. Estrada. We take our orders and our orders of probation very seriously in this court. This is the highest of misdemeanors that you have been charged with and for which you were granted probation, Mr. Estrada. You don't need to comply. You don't have to. Guess what? I've got a place for you. You can go and sit at the Bear County Jail for 365 days and pay a $4,000 bond 
And that'll be how you deal with this offense. If you cannot come into compliance with your conditions of probation and go ahead and test the court and you'll see exactly what the court has in the way of expectations for your behavior. With that, everyone is excused. I'm going to type up the order and I'll be back for the next proceeding. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Okay. To go off the record. Did you I talk to this, this man sitting next to you before this deposition started? Yesterday, but he had nothing to do I didn't with what you were currently did you, did you saying. Talk, did you I talk said to it, though, didn't I? Did you talk to him, <laughs> sir? What did you say? I said nothing. I said, you have a case of incipient verbal diarrhea. Oh, sir, we're going to see about that. Well, good. Did you talk to him yesterday? Yes. How long? Mm, about three hours. Mm -hmm. Talk about this case? Yes. Did you tell him the other companies you consulted for? No. I did You're not. under oath here. I did not. Okay. We'll see about it. When you were at Monsanto, what was your title? At Monsanto, what do you mean? In Texas City. Research chemist. And is that was that your title during your entire stay at Texas at City? Texas City, yes. Don't talk over each other. After you left Texas City. Wait a minute, let me ask a question here. Yeah. Do you represent this guy or not? Who are you? I, my name's Tucker. And I represent Ayrshire, and I just want to know, do you represent the guy or not? I, I'm getting, you know, if you don't represent him, you don't have any right to be making any objection. If you do represent him, tell us so. Why don't you keep your mouth shut? I'll do what I want. No, you're not going to do what you want. Oh, no, wait. I'll do what I want. No, you're not. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. That's I'm bullshit. I'll make whatever objections I want to make, and I'll make them as loud as I want to make them. Now, you need to shut your mouth, and we'll keep the record straight. Don't tell me to shut my mouth, boy. You may be big, but you won't see how bad you are. Come on. And I wouldn't try that, Ed. Are you threatening to fight? Hold on just a second. Oh, I want to know who Hold signed my roll. <laughs> We're going to be outnumbered, Ed. Hold on just a second. No, you got a I big mouth. You. Now you do. Now you need to either represent the man or not. I'm I tolerate him. I'm representing Monsanto, and I'm making an not, objection on the record. Then you're not entitled to be his lawyer then, okay? I'm not representing the man. Well, you're trying to be. And record. another thing. Don't tell you me don't, what I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm going to tell you something else. You don't tell, you don't run this deposition. You understand? Neither do you, Joe? You I'm watch and see. see. You watch and see who does, big boy. I'm telling you, Joe. No, you ain't telling me a goddamn I'm make thing. Whatever objections I want. You can make your objections and you keep then keep quiet. You see? No, but I'm don't be telling another lawyer to shut up. Don't be that ain't your goddamn you job, no, that's fat boy. Job. Mr. Get back. Now you got to, you got that before. You have an incipient bad. What do you want to do about it, asshole? Oh, I'd like to knock you on your. Wait, come I'm try it. Wait a minute. Come over here and try it, you wait a dumb son of a bitch. Wait just a second. Come over here. Hold it. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. No way. Get Hold on. Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. His associate are taking Mr. Garrett out in the hall to lecture him, I suppose. That doing this over our objection, we started this deposition, unable to get an answer from this man. So sometime this weekend, I'm going to try to get out something a little bit different. It's this woman who is up for parole and she murdered her mother. So it's, it's kind of interesting. And I thought I'd show that sometime this weekend. And I hope you guys watch because it is interesting. But thank you all so very much for watching this Friday night premiere. And I'll see you next time.